Welcome to Roll for Crit. I'm Will Keeler. I'm Jonathan Estes. Episode 79 of our famous podcast. So uh, famous. It's now world renowned, and people around the globe have gathered to hear our news regarding tabletop games. And we're ready to give you some. Uh, perhaps the mother of all tabletop games. Ooh. Not really, <laughs> but in a sense, Dungeons and Dragons has some pretty cool announcements that Wizards of the Coast made for them uh, this week, uh, kind of opening the game up a little bit uh, for players. It's pretty cool. So the first thing is there's this thing called the D&D Adventurers League, which people may have taken part of who are watching this. And basically that was a series of events that would happen at game shops or conventions where you'd go in like weekly or monthly and they would have special storylines that they would you know, professionally write uh, from Wizards of the Coast and release and that's you had to go in there to experience those. Well, for the foreseeable future, they've completely changed that system and you will now be able to get those uh, writ pre-written campaigns and adventures, some of them are one-off, some of them are ongoing, mm -hmm. From your home, uh, for free, you don't have to go to a store, you don't have to go to a convention, you can do them whenever and wherever you want, and you can stream them, either encouraging you to record it or not, just play it by yourself, whatever you want. So those are now open to everybody, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, and so, we, you know, we've obviously, I don't know if it's obvious, but it's obvious to us, we've never done that before. So... That's kind of a cool thing that it's no longer an ex you don't have to like go into a uh, there's no more exclusivity there anybody can experience that and it makes sense I think from their perspective because why would you want to limit that when you could get more exposure and more publicity from sharing that right, with people right. uh, I, I guess you lose the mystique of it or something maybe but I, I don't see really much of a downside I don't, well, th I don't think anyone's going to be complaining about that <laughs> the thing is in this it Mm. in terms of being in stores not anymore. Uh, it used to be sort of the thing like you got to go to, I remember, you know, as a kid, I remember with Pokemon going to the store to do the Pokemon tournament, you know, finding the place. It was, really, it was sort of an event going there. Mm -hmm. But the truth is now with the internet you're, and with the groups, it's not really, it's more of a hassle now than an event. <laughs> like, it's not really a challenge to find people to play, like, D&D &D and these who want to play these professional ones. And, of course, people are more widespread out than ever because the internet allows them to. So, you know, some people are probably, God knows how far away from an actual co a, a game store, let alone one that might actually host this. Right, yeah, I do hope that... Um... I would suggest what they should do is, though, for convent, like, do special ones for conventions that wouldn't be released right away. Like, you know, it's sort of like conventions get, like, the sneak preview, and mm. maybe, like, a month in, you get it. That would be like, cool, I yeah. don't like exclu- like, I. Sure, I've mentioned it a hundred times before on the podcast. I hate it when something's exclusive only, but I don't think there's any problem if you can get it another way. No, or that if makes there's sense a time to me. thing. Yeah, like a delay makes sense. Right. Or like um, if you were to go to the convention, you actually they actually set up like an actual dungeon or something or some you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. So anyway, that's pretty cool. So we'll have to maybe try to check some of those out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure if they said this or not. They probably did. If they'll be releasing like back catalog of stuff that came out in the past for that, that would be really cool too. Just to go back and see. I don't know how far back this goes, but the other this is even crazier thing that they're doing. Crazier is this thing that they have opened now, the Dungeon Masters Guild. So essentially, they're but it's not the Dungeon Masters right. Guild. It doesn't belong to the, to the Dungeon, Dungeon Master, Master or to multiple Dungeon Masters. <laughs> it's the Guild of Dungeon, Dungeon Masters. Masters. Just to be clear, <laughs> Punctu grammar. <laughs> Punctuation, it matters. Uh, th this this is encouraging players, uh, mainly d dungeon masters, to really? to have who create and write their own scenarios, their own campaigns, to actually submit those storylines and those adventures to Wizards of the Coast for other people to enjoy and experience, and potentially perhaps be uh, compensated for. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, th like they're they're open sourcing <laughs> D and D yeah. for people. Um, this this was the first one when I first heard of them. The first thing that came to mind was Dungeons and Dragons Maker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's pretty much what it is, and I think this is a great thing. Not, I mean, because one, while I do want to play your story, what I think what this can really shine for the Dungeon Maker's perspective isn't so you can just take someone's great idea kid because I'm sure some people have made perfect ones. But you could go in and be like, that's a good puzzle. 
Yeah. Or like, like, you don't have steal. to take the whole thing. <laughs> well, I mean, just for your own thing for your group. Like, if you're yeah. looking for, like, right. look, I want to do something interesting for this door. What can I do? And you see how – because I remember reading a while ago how – because some people are paid to be dungeon masters, I've read. And I remember reading one guy, and he did this thing when he actually did a locked door that's hidden, and the lock was actually using musical notes, like tones and stuff. That they had to solve. To yeah. Get oh, yeah. I mean, there's all kinds so of So people have come up stuff. with a creative stuff. So I think it's not as, this would be great for pe dungeon masters to see how other people have made some creative ways to really make it more than just roll the die, roll the die. You know? <laughs> yeah, as much fun as those I mean, can be. I, and that's what 5th edition is supposed to be about, isn't it? It's supposed to be making more of a story than just a numbers game. For sure. And, and I, mean, I think this is the next big step. And again, from a business perspective, it's an, I feel like it's a, it's a, it's it's good for both sides, you know. It, it, the more the happier fans are, the more fun they're having, and also the more they share, the more they want to, you know, tweet about stuff and post it wherever they're releasing something. Well, not only that, it's a really clever way to see, like, let's say, let's take a look, and they see ten things it's uploaded. It's in a book. In <laughs> That's a reference to my shirt. But <laughs> let's say they see um, ten stories, campaigns <laughs> uploaded. And they see a creature that acts very similar. That's sort of like a, spe a weird spectral creature. They don't have in the books. Like they created a creature. They're like, okay, we can see what the fans are trying to get at. So in the next one, they can actually add that in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really almost it's a great it's a hidden uh, customer service thing. It's brilliant if you think about it. We need to we need to get some roll for crit fan <laughs> campaigns in there. So You mean that literally our role for Crick? Yeah. So are <laughs> they are they the characters playing another dungeon game? That's what it is. We've this is <laughs> we've done it. <laughs> we don't need to do it anymore. It's good. Uh, so that's pretty cool. We we are we're going to talk about D and D. I think a little later in the show, perhaps it's a teaser for twenty minutes from now. And um, uh, next piece of news, we have, of course, been following the ongoing story of the Jumanji reboot, because oh, yeah. we're here for you, and you can see this fantastic image behind <laughs> us, which represents that, that <laughs> concept in all of its glory. Which you edited so well now that it's... Well, the, the camera may not... It should be nice and good for you. Uh, so, so they can't see <laughs> how you made it so uh, kawaii. That's, it's pretty kawaii. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the Jumanji reboot uh, has now officially a director attached to it, and his name is Jake Kazdan. I know what you're thinking. That guy, who is he? I'll tell you. Uh, he's done a few high-profile movies. Mainly, uh, what interests me is that he's mainly worked in the realm of comedy. Uh, he did uh, Bad Teacher, <laughs> most recently, as well as uh, bad Orange... Teacher. Bad with the Cameron Diaz movie. Not I Bad Santa. Alright, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, um, I was thinking Bad Bot... Like not horrible bosses. No. Uh, uh, what's, you're throwing me off track. Sorry. <laughs> Orange County, Jack Black. Oh, I remember that. And the one that I think is actually really, really good, Walk Hard, the uh, oh, yeah. John C. Riley. Well, I didn't think Orange County was that. Movie. I thought that was entertaining. I just haven't seen oh, it in a long time, okay. but I think Walk Hard's great. And he's also he's done like a handful of Freaks and Geeks episodes, some other shows. No. So... Yeah, it's, they're going for a much lighter theme. That's what you would it? it's, you would think. That's based on this, uh, and and uh, you know it's you could well, argue the first one is a comedy, but it's it kind of rides that line of like a Goonies Gremlins thing where it's not really a, it's like a, it's like one? an adventure movie kind of to the original. Oh, oh no, um, I thought you meant the movies you listed. I was like, no, no. but so, no, I think that is a either way what they're planning to do. I think it is a very smart move because. Whatever this movie is, I think it has to have some lighthearted moments and lines. Oh, well, sure. And having someone who can really understand that to go in first, I mean, I'm, he, he can do the lighthearted. And, and whether they want to go darker, I'm guessing he can. Because I remember, like, I, usually when I see a lot of good comedies, they have these moments where all of a sudden it gets sort of, every now and then it gets, like, dark. And, like, well, I will say, I mean, my... my you know, probably the biggest memories I have of Jumanji is being terrified by it. <laughs> when no, the right. lion and the giant spiders and stuff. But I think I think I, I'm, I don't think it's something to be worried about. I don't think it would choice. terrify me today, though. It's probably it no, for a direct. No, choice. I just think it's interesting that they are at least from based on this, based on those past movies, they're movie, They're really going in a comedy direction. Um, but and also makes sense. The other thing is, th let's be it's obvious. Like, like Robert Zemeckis or this something. is this is gonna be aimed at. Like probably a PG rating. Well, we'll maybe PG. Well, 13. it's definitely not gonna be. Yeah, no, no. It's like, at, uh, like it'd be like barely. Sure. I'm, they're gonna try to keep it PG. I'm almost. I, I'd have to make a guess. I would. Yeah, I mean, I would. I would agree. Although it's, 
I don't know. It's almost like, you know, all the Marvel movies are PG-13 now. What's the last... Well, because I think this one, they're more, this one going to be probably Animals in Chasing. That's why I'm like, I I don't know the official, like, what, what breaks it over to PG-13. I'd have to look that up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Scary, tense moments. Anyway, that's too much. I think that's still scheduled for this year, actually. I bet, Am I wrong? I don't know. Is it just... I, I don't know. Maybe it's... It's just me, but I always feel like when I hit 2016, or every year, time like, you hit 2016, every, year, every time I hit the new year, I'm so amazed what comes out that year because I forget. <laughs> like, wait, this is already coming out. Like, X Files yeah. is already is in a week. What? Yeah. Like, it's all crazy. That stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. All right. Uh, final piece of news is also pretty crazy. We're it's talking about Kickstarter. Kickstarter just released because it was the end of the year. Mm-hmm. They released a whole bunch of stats for how different brands and genres and things did over the right. years. And the interesting part is focusing on, of course, tabletop games. Really? and You wouldn't think so talking on this I show. know. <laughs> and I think, especially really compared to uh, how video games did. So tabletop games were extremely successful campaigns, well, very well funded. Uh, they made like something like over $88 million over, over about 1,200 camp- successfully funded campaigns. Uh, compared to video games, which were at about forty-six million, for roughly four hundred and change campaigns that were successfully funded. Um, so number one, it's really, really good for board games. And then number two, th- is does that is, is this in any way a sign of uh, of board games uh, competing with video games, or do you think it's str- strictly what I kind of think is? In Kickstarter's realm, video games just aren't as big of a deal as board games are. Okay. Um, I definitely agree with the second thing. Here's my reason behind it. Mm. I, I love Kickstarter's bo- both sides. But let's look, let's look in the requirements, resources, time, people, to make, a let's just say, a good-looking, like an appealing-looking, so, you know, something that catches your eye, board game, versus an appealing-looking video game. Then... Let's take in the time it takes. So when you say when this will be item will be delivered, video yeah. games take a much longer time compared to a board game. For sure. So I think part of the reason is board games are just a lot more appealing to purchase. You know what else I've noticed is that a, a lot of times with bo- with board games, usually when when there's a Kickstarter, they pretty much have a nearly finished product. A lot mm-hmm. of times it's basically just we just need to manufacture it. Mm-hmm. Uh, video games often are here's our here's what we want to do here's like a five minute demo we made and now we're gonna make a game for the next four years why why don't I guess because it's just the thing the difference is I guess with a when you're making a video game you need it costs a lot of time and money just to make it with a board game a lot of the pre-production is is time but you're just you know it's all Prototype stuff. Well, it's also the number of people you need. Right. <laughs> well, d- yeah, depending on any. But yeah, I think that's part of, yeah, it would be, that, and they come more to the you know, to the table. I think one of the things that happened is interesting is how um, both board games and video games are actually viewed in the mainstream is another big issue. I mean, huh. how, think how many times you think of the mainstream board game. What do you think people think about? If Monopoly. You really, yeah. And like, <laughs> you don't think of very, you know, very big, interesting things. So when they see these other crazy board games, it's really cool. Like, the, the bar's low mm. for board games. But for video games, we've got, like, Destiny, Call of Duty. You know, they spend, mi- like, more than some country's GDP into these <laughs> games. And, like, so people have this expectation. I mean, I remember when Steam made the, um, the refund uh, thing. And a lot of people thought that was really bad in the sense because if you had made a small game, because I think it's, was it like 24 or 48 hours? Two, two, you have to play it for two hours or less. Yeah. And you can return it. So, but if a game's short, which is probably more likely to see on Kickstarter, because that requires less people and more maybe about telling a small story, they aren't going to attract as well. I hear, I know while it happens in both sides, I hear people complain more about video games when they say like, I need to get this much time out of it. Like, mm. with, that's why people, like, so I think the expectation from a video game in a board game, combined with the fact that, as you said, video game board games usually are like, here's our fi- well, pretty much well, our usually, finished product. Yeah, one. I'm I not th- sure where this what we're talking about, but usually one one playthrough of your average video game is like four playthroughs of your average board game, and then you still are going to want to play it more. So there's definitely more 
potential value there usually no, from the perspective of uh, I, I just think it's a it's it's sort it's not like one thing it's a, all these things compound against video games in the Kickstarter you also world. have to take into account that there is no all, all the video games on Kickstarter as far as I can tell are indie games usually like you know you ha you know indie boards and cards and well, North Star there games they're on Kickstarter you know B Bungie's not launching Destiny two on Kickstarter no uh, well actually that's actually the funny thing they are <laughs> but not all right no no but what I mean is video games have found are doing their own Kickstarter in the terms of free to play through microtransactions <laughs> sort of yeah so they are but they're going. They're not using Kickstarter. Like Double Fine is really the like, only no, no, but semi-major right. company. No, but like sticking with Destiny and when you said with Bungie, they've literally said we're gonna start releasing free content and like use microtransactions to fund them. Yeah, that's kind of so a, a similar trajectory. It's trajectory. sort of, but I think that's the other thing. Like you said, though, a lot of more of the major companies are doing it because it makes more sense for them. Yeah. When video games, it doesn't. They'll. They rather release their one prop can use DLC, you know, the the rest of the game, as some would argue, right, <laughs> uh, to be released. And so, at least that's my reasoning behind it. It's not as much I don't I think video games are a bad choice to be backed on Kickstarter. It's just it's hard to compete. Yeah, it's sort of like saying why why the fish uh, why the monkey oh. lose to the fish in a swimming contest. Well. It had the it stacked against them like exactly. The, it's exactly. just hard for a video. I mean, game. board games just really have embraced no. Kickstarter completely. No, they did. It's, I mean, it, Kickstarter it was just a perfect fit. You know, video games already were doing fine. Yeah. That's the thing. And I mean, board yeah. games were doing okay too, but they really took off with Kickstarter. Yeah, no. So yeah, we're happy either way. We like yeah. we like we video like games. Both. <laughs> board games are happy. They're both doing well. Um, so we put way too many hours into both. Big deal. <laughs> and speaking of Kickstarter, oh, speaking of, it is time for our Kickstarter Pickstarter oh, for the it's week. Been a while. <laughs> it sure has. We've got some some goodies. We each got one for you. Uh, the first one that I will bring to you uh, directly to you. It is a game called Scuba. Mm -hmm. This comes from Keep Exploring Games, which is what we intend to do. Mm -hmm. And it is basically it takes place in the ocean, and you're scuba diving. It's sort of a I would call it a kind of an educational game, or at least it could be used in that context. And it is intended for families and younger players, but then there are also advanced rules for more advanced players. And you're all scuba diving, and the goal of the game is to take pictures of the coolest looking fish. So uh, if you've ever dreamed about going underwater and taking pictures of fish, you could do it in real life, or you could play this game. <laughs> if you ever dreamed, that's just like some far out goal. Well, for some you, people it is. If you live in the, in the Midwest. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, so this is cool. This, uh, of course, brings to mind for us a game that we like called Endless Ocean, uh, where you got to do just this pretty much. The uh, only difference is this can get competitive, in right, which you actually put dust down so your opponents can't see the fish. You're actually <laughs> trying to block the view of your opponents <laughs> from the good fish <laughs> so that you can get the pictures of the good fish before they can, which is kind of great. And yeah, you're moving around, you're trying to... And th things, different things can happen, like you might also find buried treasure, or the, the current can change, so fish move different directions, and then, then you have to worry about your oxygen intake, because uh, if you die, <laughs> your pictures aren't going to help you out that much. Uh, so it is called Scuba, and it, uh, it looks pretty cool. Yeah. Um, as most people who play here, I don't know if I mentioned this a lot, but one of my favorite games, granted probably not one of the best, but uh, I love it, is Dino Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> in which it was an old Steve Jackson game in which you'd have to go back in time and you're trying to make your your prehistoric zoo so you'd jump between time zones, capture dinosaurs. But it would also have facts about them, which was, I thought, really cool. And, like, seeing this, I thought it was really cool just to see all these fish. And it would be even cooler if you could actually, maybe later on, they actually made it so you could actually see, up, like, go down to, like, the abyss and see, like, all the crazy fish down there and stuff. Bring in like, some mythological, you find the no, Kraken. No, I, I, I was just going with, like, <laughs> anglerfish and viper and... You know, I but think, I, I mean, think go pretty deep. I don't yeah, know. I think this is really cool. I like the idea. I think, I think it's definitely possible to mix educational and competitive without losing one. Yeah. And I think this is a, a great way to start. And the treasure actually can just be as educational. I actually just watched a thing talking about how a guy found like a very famous Spanish shipwreck. So you could actually like look up famous like treasure wrecks and actually use those as the treasure. So this could have historical, biological. I think it's a great idea. We're about helping the children here at <laughs> Roll for Crit. 
<laughs> now, take me from the depths of the sea to the heights of space. Yes, as uh, if you couldn't have guessed, my uh, Kickstarter Pickstarter is actually space related. It's called Fleet Commander. It comes from some Cap Save Some Games. Sure. Um, what I really like about it is pretty much it's a. Uh, it's pretty much a control space fleets fighting against each other, very similar to I think uh, what we call like X-wing, Armada, those kind of things. Okay. But I think what's cool, first of all, is it's not based on a, a previous license, so they have a lot more freedom in terms of making game ships that might be more balanced and things like that. Uh, it also looks very well done, like not uh, like quick min it's not just miniatures it's actually much more to a game the of models it. are are detailed yes. and, and nice and the, you actually the, make the board and say so you know how um star uh going back to star wars it's just a three by three man you throw some random things around mm -hmm. there's actually a tiles so it's not nearly as you don't have to think nearly as worried about about like uh am i rotating r it's like, much more board game yes, centric than which i think is a can be a bit more friendly to some people if they're Especially in considering if you have a hard time placing the miniatures or going over each other. Yeah, n not as big of a of a of a dive to commit to it. Uh, right. And you don't have to also worry about five hundred expansions. <laughs> yeah. Well, they actually, this comes with two. There's possibly two expansions. The, okay. the base is called Genesis, and then there's two more expansions whose uh, name I'm forgetting, but you can look them up. Uh, and I think that's a really, gr it looks like really fun. I like that it brings something a probably a little bit different to the, I would call, I guess, the space wars sort of genre, like attack wing and stuff. Uh, I really, it's already funded. I think it's like almost two times when I checked what its funding level is. And you were just I'm laughing sorry. your head off. <laughs> I keep I keep looking at the screen to to catch a, a glimpse of the game behind us, and, and the videos oh just like voice of space, <laughs> and Neil's losing his mind behind the camera every time uh. I do it. Anyway, uh, but it does look really cool. Now you now you can actually see the video, and uh, no, I'm totally on board. I. I, I, I love the idea of the space combat is, I mean, yeah. you're preaching well, the choir well, I think with what us. The what's nice about the tiles is, and the way it works, actually, you roll die to move. You don't have to do a little thing to move, and you roll die, and that decides how to move. Right. But you can actually save some of the movements if you know, like, oh, I'm going to want to do this later, which I think is cool. And there's actually attack dice, movement dice, and, like, recovery dice. And the ships do look cool. Like, yeah. It, it's it, it's not just generic. The other cool thing with the tile system, what you can do is you can actually yeah. be like, okay, I'm going to take this tile out to put this, like, nebula. They can make spe mm. specific tiles. And then you can actually think if you want, like, you know, uh, if, let's say, sometime in the future, let's say they make an expansion that maybe was a little too strong. You actually can be like, this tile makes, puts this tile here to make it more fair. Like, you can actually find out where something is more overpowered or ra instead of being random, like, eh, three inches in. Like, it's <laughs> right, right, much right. easier. So I think it's a, a very, it'll be a very easy game for people who are interested in space flight to jump in without worrying too much, especially also, if, I'm very curious how much table room. I didn't see how much hmm. space that actually takes up. Well, I guess it might be... Oh, the yeah, other thing I you. liked is if you own two core sets of this, you actually can do four people and they actually spread out double the tiles. Oh, do you know what? That's interesting because I think, I forgot to mention, I think scuba is the same thing where if you buy two sets, you can play with double the amount of people. <laughs> but I, li I like that it's not just you sit in the same place and you take turns controlling. Uh -huh. You actually have two battlefields combined. Oh, yeah, to make yeah. a very large space with the two no, players, cool. so you still control your own fleet, and you you it's it's as if two fleet commanders came flying into the same battlefield, and you're like, so I think that's a really uh, good design on their part. Yeah, so fleet commander and scuba, mm -hmm. I think we have good. I think those are good contrasting, but strangely related. Well, well I think <laughs> it's more because we got underwater and space. Yeah, they're both empty voids with weird stuff in it, and <laughs> and you're trying to kill people in both of them. Uh, in a sense, <laughs> new scuba <laughs> expansion. Cut the air tube. Murder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. They could have the jaws come in. All right. Anyway, <laughs> you actually have to avoid jaws <laughs> swimming around. So uh, last week we <laughs> talked a little bit about the uh, potential idea of doing a ten by ten list, which, if you don't know is a list of 10 games that you want to play 10 times over the new year. And after discussing and fear of the, how we say we do one and <laughs> never get to it, we decided we, we, as Roll for Crit, not personally, <laughs> would actually make one. We collaborated for a total of 10 games mm -hmm. for both of us. Uh, and anyone else who needs to, who wants to, is forced to join as we attempt to complete our goal. And uh, we're going to go through each one here. How do you want to... 
We'll go uh, back and up. forth. Okay. We'll see, uh, <laughs> but we'll go, we're going to go through each one, explain why we want put it on the list. Yeah. And then after we get to, I think, the last one, and talk about, about the last one, of course, we'll explain why certain games not on there. And Yeah. The, the, let's so, uh, let's keep it a little off. brief, though. Yeah. That's all. I'll, yeah, I'll no, just, uh, each one's... Because there are 10 of them. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. So uh, the first one on our list is Cosmic Encounter. And a lot of these are like games like Cosmic Encounter that are not new games, but more like games that are, have been in our collections for a while that we really, really like, that have, uh, the big deal is that have a lot of content to explore. Right. And we'll come back to that. In this case, it's the alien species. For sure. The, you know, the different races, every game, there's many, many combinations mm -hmm. you can have, almost like infinite, <laughs> probably. <laughs> and, uh, but really, it's a, a game that we just ha don't, I feel like we just don't play it enough. And it, it, part of it could do with player count, could do with maybe just certain people don't like it or whatever the reason is. And well, and we're lazy to be like. Eh. Yeah, so that so Cosmic Encounter is the first one that we want to really right. try to bring out more, especially and to get a lot more of those races yes. in play. No, that really is the big one for me for this one. It's just I just want to see some of those, especially from the uh, Dominion expansion, since that was the fan created one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we I think we have a Alliance. The other one I have. Yeah, or something I'm pretty like sure that. that's the one I got. Yeah, the one with the rewards deck in it. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, is Cthulhu Wars. Now, this one is up because, like I said, I've wanted to play because even when you play a faction once, you're like, okay, what if I do this strategy? Like, each one has its own strategy, and I want to learn to master them. And in particular, one of the big things is since I backed the Kickstarter, hopefully I'll get all the stuff within this, I should, I think, within this year. And then we can actually play with more factions, mixing where you can literally switch out your Elder God and use a different one instead in different maps. I just think this one is just begging for it. Yeah, that will add a lot more uh, variation to it. And also, this is... Uh yeah, it's it's not as bad as bad a game to play ten times because it doesn't. As we've discussed many times in the show, it isn't actually that long of a game. So it's uh, I think it won't be that hard to no, make happen. No, it, it fits that perfect. Uh, each group is not like the same. They're very unbound, so to speak, and it's not like just mirror copies with like this one just that has a sword or this one gets a fruit. They're very different <laughs> in yeah, how they... There are no swords or fruit in Cthulhu Wars. <laughs> but at the same time, it's not something where you're going to spend like four hours thinking about right. your moves. Right. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. uh, next one is Space Alert. Again, this is a game that we've had for a long, long oh, yeah. time. Wow, how long actually? Like, it's one of the first games yeah. to my, my collection. And, um, I remember when you got it. Yeah, and, and we have played it a decent number of times, but... The, the, with this game, I feel like we always do the starting mission. That's though. the thing is because it is a rather complicated game, and if you're playing with different people, oftentimes you got to start with the basics because it's hard to explain. No, there was uh, I forget what there was some game in my collection where that was the case. Every time I brought it out, someone new was at the table. So so many of our games. <laughs> I know, but there's one in particular I remember thinking because it always Think bothered on it. me. But anyway, but, yeah. for Space Alert. Yeah, so my so my goal for Space Alert is really to play ten real games of Space Alert right. that that we can actually en enjoy. Plus, there and, and you know, like there's the advanced modes. There's I feel like we just got into like the full game and then we kind of stopped. Anyway, next well, next up is Dead of Winter. This is a game like once again we had a lot. We've played maybe two or three times, I think. Uh, like three ish. Yeah, <laughs> and this is one we definitely want to experience a lot more. I mean, we barely entered that crossroad deck, and that's not including now that you have the app. Which I think yeah. brought, makes it going to make it a lot more interesting and cooler. I will say this: I think looking at our list, this might be one of the harder ones to do, purely because it's a stressful game, <laughs> and I think people get um, pretty intense when playing it. So, uh, yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll see. Well, I can't wait for us to show this list, and then our, our yeah. two people in a particular group just go like, oh. "No, erase Battlestar." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. Um, Anyway, so, and, I, and the next one is Mage Knight. Is that yeah, actually this on is, our shelf? There it is, behind us. This is one of my first uh, games I actually bought. It was very early on in my collection. Another Vlada game, yeah. in addition to Space Alert. Yeah, yeah, the reason I think this is on there for us is, well, we, I think it's just a fantastic well, game. <laughs> this was the one. <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> because every time I played it, it has a new, so we're always doing that new just exploring scenario. It's funny because, you know, Vlada games, both yeah. this and Space Alert, have that tutorial right. thing. No, and the only time we didn't do it was, it was just you and me playing. We played And it the wrong. best thing is, we played it wrong. We didn't do it with the time limit, so we played for so long. There's supposed to be a time limit, and we did not know that. <laughs> it, it took us like eight hours to finish. <laughs> 
But I mean, it's a lot of fun, and it's just, I've had to explain it every again each time. So it's no. I think it's, there's just so much depth there to explore, and I feel like we have not scratched the surface. And I think it really is like a crime. That well, we the, the amazing thing is, I think after you and I played it, I played it with some other people like one more time. That hasn't been on my on the like hit our table for like no, three, like a few years. It never comes it's out. Really, and I think part of it is because it, it is a little intimidating. No, that one is. There are some of these that are on here because they take so long they become intimidating. Which is, actually, that's what I think is about Cthulhu Wars is funny. It looks intimidating <laughs> right. when it's not nearly as intimidating as, as some would think. All right, what else you got? Well, I think. Oh, right, I'm next. It's Robinson Crusoe, <laughs> and this is once again so many scenarios, and once again we almost always do the starting one. Yeah, I think once I can remember we did we did the cannibal one. That's it. I, we did do the King Kong one once. Oh right. And I'm pretty sure we lost. Oh yeah, everyone <laughs> got eaten. <laughs> and but also we have that whole Voyage of the Beagle expansion, yeah, which is its no. own campaign. And the you know the Cthulhu one's gonna come out soon. We gotta be ready. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. Well, then the other thing with this is the new edition is coming out. So the question right. is, when does that come out? Do we wait until that to play it anymore? Mm. We'll have to think about that. Well, I'm probably going to buy the new edition since you have the old edition. I mean, <laughs> Screw that. I want it, too. <laughs> <laughs> it looks awesome. Anyway, so uh, that's Robinson Crusoe. The next up is Versus. Now, uh, with this one, I know when we actually discussed it, we talked about we really wanted to get something of like an LCG on there. Yeah, we thought and, about Netrunner. Which was very close, but then I realized Versus is one that, I mean, is Marvel and we love and we want to talk about. I mean, have you seen they announced the next, what the next one is? The next Versus set? Yeah. What is it? Defenders. Oh, okay. Oh, so cool, 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 that's cool. really cool. And I remember we were really excited when we, you bought it, and we just really <laughs> yeah. haven't, and it's really <laughs> it's been just a... just sat there. Yeah, it's really uh, sad. So yeah, that's, we're definitely going to put some games into that. Plus, and, maybe because, try building well, some decks. In particular, that's why we wanted... This is on the 10x10 to learn how to play and then actually do some weird customization. I mean, right now, you only have a copy, but odds are once we play it through all the pre-made decks and stuff, I would want to get my own. One, because we want to play against each other and be able to have, make our own decks. Two, you know, there's a good chance Alien, Predator, and Firefly are going to appear in the first world. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, how could I not want to have we that? Ne we need that in there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. Next Next, next up is Secrets of the Lost Tomb. Uh, this is a, a favorite of mine, and one of the reasons why I really like it is because, one, this hits all the large stories, you know, like just like Robinson Crusoe, we need to explore all of them. But the other thing I liked about it is when we played it uh, last, is we realized they actually have a very good difficulty curve. Like when we played it, we were, like I put it on the regular easy mode because I'm like, I don't know what this is, but we could handle it. Yeah. And of course, they issued us a challenge to find <laughs> the sword in the lair of the worm, which right, we're all was. going to die. <laughs> but... I and mean, they have all characters, they have different scenarios. I'm about to get a book where it actually gives special stories for the characters. So it's actually have, they actually have background stories. Yeah, there, there's definitely a lot of. I've seen the books. <laughs> there's yeah, I mean, plenty of cool stuff to do in that game. <laughs> it just seems it's one of those games that's on here because we know that when, by doing it ten times, we're actually gonna have ten different experiences. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. Uh, the next one is Rattle Battle Grab the Loot, and this is another one where I think the reason it's on here is just because we liked it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we haven't played it. Enough. And we only played it uh, once so far, but uh, it was it was really fun. And there's a lot of it, there's just, it's a unique game with some cool components. And I think, and again, it is another one with varied scenarios involved. So you're gonna get different experiences when you play. Yeah. Uh, and our final one, which is, I guess it, we, we argued whether it counts it's or not. Sort of a cheat, I think. <laughs> yeah, is but. Dungeons and Dragons. Now I'm the one who who pushed to put this on this one on the list, mostly because I'm sick. I am very sick of us sick. constantly oh. saying we're going to do D&D &D this week. <laughs> Nothing happens. Well, here's here's what's going to happen is we're going to force ourselves to play this because what what our what we'd like to do, our intention is to actually record a whole bunch of our sessions and and release them uh, as podcasts. Yeah, uh, so you guys can either listen to them or if you watch them on YouTube, we're actually going to hopefully get Neil to do actually some piece of artwork for some of the scenes and stuff so you can watch us doing being really stupid and trying to hide <laughs> the head of, a, of the Cyclops. And so whatnot. that will be our, if nothing else, we're, we're going to drive that one home, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so that is our list. That's our ten lists. Ten. But uh, we'll as we see said in the beginning. how we do at the yeah. end of the year. Well, I want to talk a little bit about why certain games didn't make it. Mm. And I, for example, I think you mentioned a good one, which I want to bring up. Well, for me, like I said, like it was a time series. Yes, and I think the example hits two of the notes that I want to see. One, it's not a game you want to play ten times. Well, that yeah, that's true. But two, there are certain games we on here we know we're not going to have a trouble getting on the table. 
Right. Like these are all ones that we love. And like we said, even Rob Battle Grab the Loot, we love and we want to play more. But how many of these have we, like I said, with even Magi in particular is the worst yeah, of the offenders. They're usually ones that for whatever reason, either because they're so complicated or because we don't have time or player count, they just don't come out as much. So like Time Stories, I know I, I want to play Time Stories right now. <laughs> like I don't need no. to put that on a list. <laughs> no, even I'm, the Cthulhu Wars is one that I can And it's get not that there. I don't want to play these. Yeah. They're just not as, like, well, you, can just, you can't just jump right into them and have fun. I no, think. exactly. And I, de I definitely think it's a lot of the, having the people around us, too. Yeah. Because there's a lot of times we're like, oh, we'll play this. Oh, no. But now we're going to be like, no, we have a 10 by 10. And guess what? You guys are in it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to force it. <laughs> you don't it. have a choice. Force it on so yeah, everybody no, else. Because if it was between you I uh, and, like, a few, probably, like, one or two other people in our group, mm. I think we could at we least. have no problem. I can at least see three of these on here. That we probably could get done within a month. By the way, we have the list in front of us. Yes. You're wondering why we're gesturing to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I should have realized. But, uh, like, yeah. It, it's not. It's just getting. It's getting the, the plants aligned. I think and, we're gonna do a good job. And by making this <laughs> ten by ten, which is one of the things I remember when we first talked about. In my point, it was scary to do. Is is pretty much making is forcing us. It's not saying we've literally we've sort of made a contract now. Well, let's make a pact that every game night we gotta play at least one of the games on this list. Well, you know I'm gonna bring Cthulhu Wars almost every single <laughs> one. <laughs> All right, so we're, we will keep you updated on our progress, and again, we still would like well, to actually, hear your Well, actually, we're guys gonna list. keep this board out and mark it every time. What if we need to use this board for something else? That would be impressive, because we haven't used this board for a long time. <laughs> you never know. All right. Well, we want to hear from you. We want to know what you th your thoughts are. Are any of these games on your yeah. list or uh, not? We'd like to know what, what you think our chances are on this 10 by 10. Do you want to take have a betting pool? <laughs> <laughs> the odds that on That would be game? great. We should uh, do that ourselves. <laughs> um, but I would definitely like to see if any of these, what are your 10 by 10 and why? Do you have similar reasons? Like... Is it because you want to get this game because it has a lot of scenarios? Is it because you just have a hard time placing it down, getting the group to get we to it? We want to know! No, because this is very interesting. Like I said, for us, it's a contract of like... <laughs> it's a deal with the board game devil. <laughs> But of course, uh, how can they let us know? <laughs> well, of course, you can comment right on this video first, and of course, subscribe. It's right down there, and definitely let us know. We'll always read about them, and we'll read comments. You can also up. send us an email with mm -hmm. your thoughts, rollforcrit at gmail.com. We will read it on mm -hmm. the air. And what if they want to send us a, a, a small message? Just small messages. You can catch us on the twitters at rollforcrit or our personal twitters, which are on the screen around us. And of course, if you want to comment on these videos, we actually have a site mm -hmm. where you can actually buy a lot of the games we mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, you can look up news articles. You can actually even leave comments on these games and on the news articles. If you want to know where all our videos are, it's, it's all there. It's just <laughs> such a perfect source. We just put out a coup video if you're a fan of the game coup. Yeah, and it was definitely, I think, one of the most interesting coup games we've played in yeah, a while. Yeah, it was interesting. We had some good talk, too. We mm -hmm. had some good talk. Uh, so we, we would love to thank you but we can't, <laughs> for joining us for this number 79 edition of Roll for Crit, the podcast. Jonathan really likes the number 79. I just love it. <laughs> it's a good round number. Uh, anyway, I'm Jonathan Estes. I'm Will Keeler, and this has been Roll for Crit. Lights. Camera. Boredom. Um. Ah! That's how I get ready. <laughs> Ships that might be more balanced and things like that. Uh, it also looks very well done, like not. Uh, nice. And the, you actually the, make the board and say, so you know how uh, it's like really fun. I like the it brings something a, probably a little bit different to the I would call I guess the space wars sort of genre, like attack wing and stuff.